I was, I came very late to the project. It was written in 07. Peter Lenz been adapted uh, Nick Scow's book and Gary Webb's Dark Alliance. And it went into turnaround. It was developed at Universal in 07. And then Renner got involved. Uh, he was, I think, really the force that was able to sort of unshelve it. Was he always attached to it? Or would that no, also he wasn't. But it's, you know, in 07, I think, because the journalism movies weren't doing well in the box office, as it always happens. That's how Hollywood works. They wait for the genre to sort of become the thing again, like maybe like Homeland or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it, R Renner attached himself to the project as a producer because he started a company and, he, you know, he's able, sort of his name was able to get a greenlit. And then I came on board. I had worked with Jeremy on two projects, so we had a history. Um, <coughs> I remembered the story, but I didn't, I, I wasn't really fully aware of the amount of discrediting that went on and so the, the, the grinder that he, this man went through. <coughs> so I just really saw that as, as, you know, a real, real injustice and also shocking of the media actually taking down their own. And, um, you know, Gary was at war with his bliss. And I, I thought it was a really worthy story to tell. Rosemary, did you know the story beforehand? You know, I didn't, and that was part of the intrigue for me. Was I, I couldn't believe I didn't know it. That was, and it wasn't like I was under a rock. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think I just graduated college, and and I uh, was really thrilled that the opportunity to tell, to play a real life person and someone I would have access to. And I know after meeting with Sue and spending time with her, it was really important to the family that Gary be vindicated. And Actually, you jumped in because I did want to know how how. Did you spend time with her and how you got to learn? I did. She was really uh, generous and available to us, wouldn't you say? Oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, she <laughs> shared home movies. Um, <laughs> I, I flew up to where she lives and I spent the day with her. And, you know, I didn't want to be like a journalist to her because this is her life. And, you know, there are kids and they had to live in the aftermath of the postscript. Um, mm. But she was very, uh, very generous. And, and even though they divorced, she was still uh, a big fan of his. I mean, I spoke with Sue very early on, and I found that to be the best thing for me to understand Gary as a man. So it was all about just getting to know what he was like at home and as a guy. <coughs> you know, more of the story was from all the materials and everything like that, and also revisiting all the articles that were written about it, you know, the Post and the, the, the LA Times and all that, and New York Times. But Sue was really helpful because it helped me understand Gary Moore as a real guy, and I think a filmmaker has to, at least I like to sort of play the method director a little bit and really feel like I can be this guy and be in his shoes and understand that that dogged passion that he had for his um, for his family, but was of course for his for getting the truth out in his. Craft. <laughs> and then what about um, Jeremy Renner as a uh, method actor? Is that part of the part of the part of the process? Uh, Jeremy, um, you know, he, he he's such an instinctual actor. You know, he's so um, so fucking, uh, so honest and always. I just remember, you know, when, when we worked together, it was like I have to work with this man again, and he's you know going to be a star, or you know, um, and his sort of stardom, I guess, happened a little later as far as being an action hero or whatever. But um, a at the heart, he's like got a great sort of complexity and darkness. Um, maybe that's why it took a little longer. I mean, he started with J Jeffrey Dahmer. You know, he played the Dahmer character in the famous indie um, that goes way back. So he always brings a little of that <laughs> to, to whatever he does. Um, you know, I always reference the scene on the uh, driveway when, when he's saying goodbye to you guys. And the Jeremy was so sort of, um, I mean, he didn't have to say anything. Mm. You just knew where he was emotionally. The thing that I think would be the biggest challenge, and it's interesting that this has been around, you say, since 2007, is that? Uh, two th oh, se oh, seven, yeah. I think that's when we went and started, but by the time it was shelved, like, oh, eight, yeah. Because cause the balance of what he did well or not so well as a journalist and what fellow journalists did to him seemed like the two sides of the story. Where did he tell the truth, where was he sloppy? Not in telling the truth, not that he didn't tell the truth, but he was sloppy in his journalistic approach. And the balance seems to come down more heavily in the film on journalism ate one of its own. Yeah, I mean, he, 
look, he connected a lot of dots. I believe the story was printed too early, you know, and it was a three-part series. Webb want, Gary wanted a five-part, six-part series, and they edited it way, way down. And at that point, he went up to his, you know, uh, he sent the story in, and then remember the scene, it's like, don't mess it up. She's like, I got it. I mean, they brought it down, and then they packaged it improperly. They made it very sensational, and they that put the logo. crack pipe. Well, the crack pipe on the CIA logo is just the epitome of, like, of create, like you just said, creating the second story and creating the Rashomon effect that it took on. And it became, it became two stories. It became the thing that Gary wrote about and the thing that people turned it into. And he never wrote that, they, they, that it was a consp CIA conspiracy to addict people to drugs or to, to do that. And it, it became that. And all of the people, including even Chris Matthews, you know, uh, it's funny, I did a Q&A with him mm -hmm. a week and a half ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, he was reading from the Cliff Notes. And Gary then spent, instead of following up on the story that he wrote, he was defending it. And, um, and that's what it became. It became what people said it was. But it then was. it became also the depiction of journalism, both the hierarchy of journalism, the Washington Post and the New York Times versus this little newspaper, and even his own superiors backing off from supporting him. Yeah. yeah well, they... They supported him for a while. Obviously, it's so hard. You know, th uh, th uh, films like this. It's you know, there also there's a documentary version of it, and there's also a miniseries version of it to sort of pack it all in. But you know, they supported him for 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 a time um, until they had corporate pressure, and it just became too much. Um, the Ray Liotta scene is representative mm -hmm. of the one. I mean, that is much more um, him and also the Michael Sheen character or amalgams of a, a few characters. But Le that Leota scene, no one ever really came to him in the hotel room. Um, it was a DEA agent that had information about CIA handlers and pilots. And it was the one, but when he got that bit was exactly where it is in the movie, where he did go in as his last bit, and they, they did, were backpedaling at that point. You know, they wrote the, the, the letter. And that letter you can't even find in terms of it being printed. We were able to get copies of things, but we could not find that. Are you now friends with CIA, agen a CIA agents? Do you know that do they hang out because they know you between uh, Homeland and this, and my have a great interest in your work? Well, the, the Homeland they love because it's like a huge confection, you know. And she would have been fired in the second episode if it was real, you know, because she's bipolar and she's crazy. Um, so I don't know how. I, I guess they're just ignoring it. You know, I was just talking uh, to someone about how how. Sorry, not so much Rosemary. Um, about one thing that the movie, what Gary didn't write about, is the CIA within the CIA. You had Bill Casey, who was the director at that time, and then you had all the other guys doing their other things. So it's a secret organization. The right hand doesn't know what the left hand's doing. So that was something that, in terms of what he got wrong, like I think that was something that he could have gotten into. And it's not that it's taking blame off of them. But, um, it, you know, d I don't know if that was left out intentionally. I was just talking to Jonathan Weiner in Washington, D.C., who the Sheen character is partly based on, and we were talking about that. So I think that's interesting. Um, and uh, but it wasn't Gary's idea to package the story that way or to oversimplify it either. So. Um, the beautiful time that the family had in the lake before everything hit the fan. Where was that? I was that was Georgia? Yeah, we shot outside um, of Atlanta. And also I thought what was really interesting about that scene was, was am I right in saying that this was the first sort of big breaking article on the internet that went viral? Like, we're so used to things going viral now, but that was, you know, they're clicking away and they're like, is it up? Is it up yet? Mm -hmm. And I don't think any journalists or any people had the experience before then of having their words kind of go out there in such a, a rapid way and not be able to. The, he did have to defend it yeah. in a really different kind of way. Yeah, no, you're right. And it was, Ga is, it was Gary's idea to do that. Uh, he felt the story had a high unbelievability factor. So like we're Silicon Valley, we're San Jose, there's this new technology. Let's, let's use the internet to allow people into my notebooks, you know, kind of thing, and, s and check the sources and see the court documents or the, uh, or 
interviews with different people and, and his notes and things like that. 